quite often in the past we've seen goalkeepers really shining at a team that's fighting relegation at the bottom because they face so many shots. But his save percentage is, uh, I think it's the lowest in the league. I don't have the updated stats after this game. And I'm thinking back Ramsdale. When he was uh, Bournemouth and Sheffield United, I think he got player of the year at both clubs. Mm. They were both relegated. But he was still impressive. I can't say the same about Ward based on, on the stats there, like his save percentage. I'm glad you mentioned that because if you think back to Sheffield United, they actually had a very well-organised defensive unit in front of them and most of the shots he was facing were from distance. So he was uh, he, not uh, amongst that he was making other saves, but a lot of what he was facing was from distance. Same with uh, Henderson when he was there. You know, a lot of he didn't have to do a lot of the dirty one-on-one -on -one stuff. They still got relegated though. No, no, granted, but the point is his save percentage and his his uh, ac acrobatics are going to look good because he's got a lot to do. Like we tried to point out before the game, Danny Ward's getting so exposed. You know, even when we we see Son's goals, I mean, this is shooting practice stuff. For a centre forward with that ability to curl it around here, to curl it around there, goalkeeper stands very little chance. I think the, the, the problem that he's had, is, and I go back to the point that at 29 years old, he spent three years on the bench and only spent one season as a full first team goalkeeper. And I was saying to Jason when watching the game, if you're 25, 26 and you're making your first full season in senior football as a goalkeeper, you're not too old. But then to go and spend two or three years as a number two, then get called in to a Premier League side behind a very shaky defence, then you're going to get exposed one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to let goals in. The confidence bit, um, I, one scenario, uh, uh, anecdote I'll give you is Jordan Pickford playing for Sunderland. I question why he kicked the ball long all the time. And he said, have you seen my defenders? OK, so you asked the question, and we, we've just shown highlights of Leicester playing the ball out of the back from defence and giving the ball away and conceding goals. Well, you don't want to play to players who you think are going to give the ball away, so you're going to be a bit shaky wanting to play short. Did he say that on the record or off the record? Technically, it's off the record, okay. but now... Yeah, no, no, well, Jordan, no Jordan, it's on. I mean, yeah, well, Jordan Pickford is one of the... Just one as, of the... as a defender in, in that team, I wouldn't <laughs> be happy with that. So oh, it's no, interesting it was, it was, it was, it, When yeah. I met Jordan at uh, an under-21 game, I just had the chat with him because I'd, I'd been doing some analysis on his kicking. Um, what you had in Cassius Michael is one of the best kickers in Premier League goalkeeping history. He could kick long, his goal kicks would hit the opposition penalty spot. That's how far he could kick it. And yeah. also he could kick it's accurately. A good, it's a good point now, because yeah. what we were looking at there, and I noticed against Brighton, when he went long with his kicks, he actually doesn't kick that far. So mm. in respect to that means, when you're back four are now trying to get out, they've got less time to actually get right up. So by the time the ball comes back, they're still on the edge of the box. Mm. Yeah. And they're right under pressure again, because the, the ball's just coming back. True. They need to get out a lot quicker, yeah. but then in that context, Cassius Michael, when it's longer, you've got more time to get out, haven't you? And yeah. push up to the halfway line. You, you, you set your whole team... When, when you've got a goalkeeper mm. who is proficient and confident at kicking, you can set your team up how you want because he can pick people out around the pitch. If you've just got a bog-standard kick, then all of a sudden you're limited in what you can do and also the opposition know what it is you're going to do and then they can counter-attack. Was Schmeichel always good at kicking, though? He had a goal. Uh, I brought in a kicking coach at Man City. You brought in a goal. I brought him in, coach. and I met Casper at Leicester the year they got the title. And I said to him, um, "Your kicking's good." And he said, "You know that kicking coach? I did everything he did and continued to do it." And how was he before that? He was a young whippersnapper, full of confidence. But his and kicking? I mean, he just booted it. Okay. Whereas in the end, he became seriously. When you talk about Edison and Alisson being great kickers, Kasper Schmeichel was as good as either of them. I've got to confess, I knew the story already. I was just saying <laughs> it, yeah, so... Because I've been, him I've been I've digging him... Up, I didn't know that, but yeah. he, he should be on 10% of Kasper's... Oh, uh, oh, he's he just got the nice, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But I think mm. of Kasper Schmeichel, I think, of shot-stopping. I don't think of kicking. Do you? Yeah, no, no, it's a fair point. I think he's yeah. a really good shot-stopper. But his distribution was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, yeah. As well. But anyway, but, but this, uh, I think from, again, a Brendan Rodgers sets Teen up with uh, Kasper Michael. Then it's kind of like, well, if I need you to kick the ball long, ironically with Edison, who has got the world record for the longest kick, he didn't kick the ball over the halfway line today. And most games, he does not kick the ball over the halfway line. Did, did Schmeichel, did he preempt what's going to happen at Leicester? I know it is a very difficult scenario, but I think you can kind of look at it. Lost a lot of big players, influential players. It was the move, do you think, calculated? I don't know, but I would, I would argue, yeah, because last, the beginning of last season, I loved, 
Yeah, but th 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 this is where Leicester are at the moment. The beginning of last season, Kasper Schmeichel was playing in a Community Shield game. Yeah. yeah. And he was talking about how Leicester were now a team that he considered trophy hunters, and that was what they were going to do. And they, if I remember rightly, they started the season badly. Yeah, and then there was the FA Cup, there was Nottingham Forest, and that's where Brendan Rodgers came out and said, I think that... And effectively, and this he's the point. So this, this, thing, this thing isn't new, that they're in a no. problem. We talk about the clean sheets and how good Casper is. Casper was part of a side that were continually conceding goals. He was making a lot of saves, which adds to his value, but in the same time, he wasn't stopping Leicester from conceding goals and therefore putting themselves in a detrimental but, but position. But without looking at the goals, my guess would be that the goals, if you analyse them, you wouldn't be saying, hmm, 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 in the way that we're saying that about Danny Ward. Would they be in that position that had Casper Spike I'm not, up I'm, in not, I'm, I'm not certainly not. I know you're not as well trying to criticise Danny Ward. We're just saying... No, we're well, not. Because no. it's not just about him. It's, it's about the defenders mm. and, and the mm. midfielders and, you know, indeed what he did there. And I'd say there's only perhaps one goal where he might look at that, where the, I think it was Son's hat-trick. But even then, it's difficult. It's low down to him. And he's, he's got a touch and unfortunately it wasn't enough. I think the Casper Schmeichel thing was more finance. Mm. And again, the bigger picture is the finance of what's happening. Mm. You know, uh, the, the King Power, you know, the, the, the company that the owners have, it's tourism, and that's mm. obviously been hit big time by the pandemic. Um, the amount of money they have spent, wages to turnover, the wages have gone up as well. So I think getting Casper Schmeichel off the, off, the, off the books in terms of wages has been big to try and manipulate other things going on. The problem is that when, you know, they, they didn't want him to be carrying on and earning those type of wages. So what do you do? You sell him. But you sell him and the, and the books look great, mm -hmm. but there's a big gap between him yeah. and Danny Ward. Well, yeah, I just want to know an, another question here. Let's, um, let's say that when I think of the Premier League and, the, and certain goalkeepers, I think they are reserve goalkeepers. Uh, Ross Turnbull, Peggy Ofaxid, uh, Bernard Lama, throwing out all these names. How... Do, if that keeper has to come on and has always been on the bench, Raymond van der Howe, always on the bench and the starting number one is injured for three months or gone, how does that affect the rest of the team in terms of confidence? Let's say for you, Shamo's out for three to six months of a broken arm or something. Shaka. What happened? What, happened? what happened with your arm? Come on. Three to <laughs> six months with a broken arm. Soft. Oh, it was a wrist and a broken arm. Six months for the broken arm. Jamo, oh, come on. It'd still be diamond. Was it over Christmas? <laughs> 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 like... With photo shoots. Yeah, I know, no. yeah. Um, Armani photo shoots. But how does that affect it, the confidence of a side? Well, of course. It, it, I mean, it depends on the character as well. I mean, Jamo for me was was very vocal in the dressing room. He he was a leader. He was quite alpha in the, in a in a dressing room where Casper was very much like that as well. He was a big influence, a big character in that dressing room. So a lot of players are going to look up to that leadership, which is obviously gone now. Danny Ward's not going to offer that, being a, a second keeper coming into that squad. It, you've got to earn the right to do that. And I think Casper being part of that setup, winning the league and the FA Cup, what have you, I think he earned the right to do that, and he was. So I think he's, he's been a massive loss. Um, it is difficult for a second choice keeper to come in. I mean, I don't know. I mean, mm. Jamo will tell you more. Well, he was mainly number one, wasn't he? Well, it's, yeah, it's I mean, hard to ask he, Jamo. Yeah, but I mean, I'm trying to think when it, when it happened. I mean, Tony Warner. He very rarely played, did he? He but didn't. He didn't no, play. We used to call Tony one. His nickname is Bonus. <laughs> Tony Bonus, yeah, because he never Sitting played. He just used bonus. to get the bonus. Yeah. So his nickname was Bonus, <laughs> one of Tony the, Bonus. The, the, the but, bottom line is, you want your best players to play. Mm. And I would say goalkeeper is as important as striker. They're the two yeah. craziest stroke, in, most important positions on the pitch. You know, as a left back, I'd love to say it's the most important position. Of course it's not. Um, and, and the spine is, is the most important of the team. But sticking the ball in the back of the net, and actually now, as only now, goalkeepers and central defenders are, are seeming to go for bigger money in the way that strikers are, even though it's not as sexy just to block a shot that would have gone in, because we don't know if it would have gone in, as opposed to Harry Kane sticking it in the back of the net. But what he used to do was just as important as a, as a striker. Yeah. Keeping the ball out the net just as important as putting it's the ball points, in the, absolutely it's in the points. net down the other end. OK. I mean, sorry, just to touch on that, it's no, it's no coincidence that the teams that win the Premier League usually have the best keeper. Peter Schmeichel for years. Sorry, Jamal. Um, he was very good, though. Oh, um, absolutely. <laughs> he, he, he just left bad. you with that. <laughs> 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 um, well, he's got long arms, actually. <laughs> he's got very long, long legs, arms. too. He can kick pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> There's another keeper that's just popped up in my head, Scott Carson. He's actually had an opportunity or two to play for Manchester City, but he's usually on the bench.